Hi everybody, Joe Walden here. In this video, I'm going to show you the user interface that I created to control the environment in our chicken coop. My son-in-law turned me on to this idea when he was working on a class project and suggested that I use a Raspberry Pi to control the environment of our chicken coop. In this video, I'm not going to get into the JavaScript code or how to set up the Raspberry Pi. Instead, I just want to show you the user interface and help you understand what it is that we're controlling. When we built the chicken coop, we knew we needed a few features. We needed to control a heater to provide warmth in the winter. We needed to control an exhaust fan to remove the warm air in the summer. To keep predators from terrorizing our chickens, we needed to control an automated door that opens at sunrise and closes at sunset. Now many hens stop or slow down egg production during the fall and the winter. This is because a lack of daylight and cooler temperatures tell their bodies to rest. During this time you can fool the chickens into thinking the days are longer with artificial light. We don't approve of nor practice this technique. We prefer to give the birds a chance to rest. However, this seemed like a challenging feature and I wanted to try to write some code to see if I could give the coop a fixed amount of daylight hours. Again, we don't practice this technique, but I added this feature just for the fun of it. What you're looking at here is a simple test bench that I set up to test and verify that the code I wrote was working properly. This is the Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi Model B with 2 gig memory and a 64-bit uh, uh, Raspbian OS. The application is written entirely in JavaScript and is running uh, using Node.js. This video is just introducing you to the interface, but in the future, I will have another video that shows how to set up your dev environment, uh, what apps you need to install on the Pi, and include a very detailed deep dive into the code. The next item on the test bench is an eight relay module. This is a common relay module used with the Pi. These are sometimes called pilot relays because they are switching a heavier load than the Pi can handle on its own. This is the breadboard, and on the breadboard is a BME 280 sensor. This sensor reads temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity. The reason I use this sensor is because it's an I2C sensor. With an I2C sensor and the Raspberry Pi, uh, you can get an extender, which allows you to run uh, approximately a 50-foot cable out to your sensor and not lose any of the signal. The extender I'm using is called an LTC 4311 I2C extender. Also on the breadboard is a push button switch. This push button is only to simulate the photocell input. When the button is pushed, it simulates daylight from the photocell, and when I take my finger off the switch, it opens and simulates the photocell detecting nighttime or no daylight. Well, now that we spent the last three and a half minutes um, going over the introduction of the um, components and everything, let's take a look at the user interface and the chicken coop dashboard. This is what you're going to see on, the, uh, on your phone. <clears throat> what I uh, wanted to accomplish when I created this dashboard is that I wanted to have a quick summary of all of the uh, current conditions displayed at all times and then um, go into the control of each of these items. So looking at the dashboard, let's just go through the current conditions real quick here. Uh, I have the server time, which is um, uh, the time on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I have the temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure uh, of the coop. I have the uh, heating set point and whether the heat is on or off. I have the exhaust set point and whether the exhaust fan is on or off. I have the door uh, open uh, time uh, setting, the delay. I guess, I, I don't know what to call that. It is a delay um, time setting. And uh, I'll explain that when we get into the door control. And also um, I have whether or not the door is open or closed. I have the light duration, uh, which is currently disabled. Uh, and the light is off. I also am monitoring the photocell. Now the photocell is, uh, of course, is a light sensor that uh, closes a contact when it senses light and opens the contact when it uh, doesn't. 
Um, currently, the photocell is off, but that's because I'm only uh, mimicking the uh, dry contacts um, of the photocell by the switch on the breadboard. And as you can see, when I press the switch here now, the photocell does come on. I'm going to remove my hand. The switch uh, shows off. Okay, so um, that's that's it for the current conditions and the uh, summary. Uh, let's take a look and see what's involved with the heat control. Uh, as a user, you're just going to click on this accordion drop down here, and you're going to be shown whether the heat is on or off, and uh, notify you that the heat will run when the coupe is cooler than the set point which is currently 69 degrees now if I raise the temperature up uh, if you uh, notice that I've got to get above the current temperature which is 71 degrees up here on the current conditions so uh, when I did that the uh, heat came on when I go under the set point the uh, heat uh, shuts off. I also have an auto manual setting here which if I go to manual you notice that my set point is disabled I can't change that but I can come in here and override the heat on or off as, um, as needed. Also when I go back to auto the Raspberry Pi takes over and will automatically uh, run the uh, program based on the set point. And also when I go to auto, this is disabled. I can't click it right now. So that's just a little uh, a feature there. Same thing with the exhaust fan. Um, I show that the exhaust fan is off. The, the fan will run when the coupe is warmer than 74 degrees, which it's not. It's only 70 degrees in this demo here. So let's raise it up, raise it below uh, 70 because we're saying it'll run when the coupe is warmer than 69 degrees and it is it's 70 right now and there you go the uh, exhaust, exhaust fan came on uh, and here again I have the same setting here where I can override this and um, and all of these settings here if I set it to manual and I override it um, or I change the set point that all is written to a configuration file that configuration file is read every time the Raspberry Pi starts up and um, I did this because I don't want to have to every time there's a power failure or the board resets or something I don't want to have to go in and reset all of this set points and everything I want it just to read what the last set point was or whether it was in manual or auto or overridden I want all those things to come back uh, every time the Raspberry Pi starts it, so starts, so I don't have to worry about re-adding those um, uh, values. And again, so when I go back to auto, of course the uh, Raspberry Pi takes over and it turns it on. So let's move this up. It shuts off. Now the door control is interesting because uh, here I show whether the door is open or closed. And I have a time element here which delays the door opening until after this time. So uh, what that means is so what we like to do is when the, uh, even though the daylight uh, is, you know, at 6.30, 7 o'clock in, in, in the morning, we don't want the chickens to run out right away. We want them to kind of hang out in the coop, um, uh, lay their eggs. Uh, eat some of the uh, food from the feeders that are in the coop and that kind of thing. And then after 11 o'clock, we want the uh, door to open and uh, stay open until the uh, photo cell says it's nighttime and then it'll close. So um, how, what this is doing here is, is this is just a time setting. You can set it up to whatever you want, you know, uh, uh, whatever time you want. Let's say I want it to be at 9, 9.02, okay? So that means the door is not going to open until after 9.02. And, of course, the solar, uh, the, the photocell has to be on. So 
the time now uh, is 12 noon, according to the server time here up at the top. So if I go and I simulate the photo cell being on, the door should open. I'm pressing it now. There we go. The door is open. Uh, it shows the photo cell is on up here. And then when I release it, it should take over. Photo shell should, should uh, uh, open. And uh, now the door is closed. Okay. And here, <clears throat> I can, here again, I can also manually open the door and I can manually close the door because sometimes w we want to um, keep the door closed and not open it at all for the day. We can just come in here and just click this and, and leave it closed. Okay, so uh, that's it for the door control. Now let's look at the supplemental lighting. Now here it's currently disabled and of course the light is off. Um, I have the options again here of, of turning the light on or off with the override. But when it's in the auto position here, <clears throat> and, and, and this disabled is selected from this drop down, nothing will happen. The light will not come on or off uh, uh, by any um, control. If I come down here and let's say I select 14 hours or 15 hours, okay? Let's say I say 15 hours. What that means is that when the uh, photo cell is off, the light will re remain on, on uh, for a total of, uh, co you know, combined hours of, uh, of, uh, of light. <clears throat> what, what, what actually is happening here is, so when the photo cell originally um, starts for the day, it, it, uh, I read the time, the time of day that it is. And then I add 15 hours to that time and that um, has to expire before the light shuts off, okay? So if the photo cell is on, you notice the light is off, okay? Even though the, the math is still being done in, in the program there, it's still, um, the light is off because the photo cell is on. But then should the photo cell um, uh, detect night, you know, lack of light, like now, okay, the light will continue on and it'll run so that it is a total accumulated hours of 15, 15 hours of guaranteed light. So that explains it. A uh, little, um, uh, my ability to articulate <laughs> everything is not the greatest, but I, I hope it shows you exactly what the, uh, the whole deal is. Thanks for watching and um, have fun. Look for the new video uh, on the code and everything because I'm going to show how Raspberry Pi is put together and, and uh, uh, configured and everything to do this. Um, it's really uh, uh, complicated, but uh, somewhat easy. Once you get the technique down on, on each control, uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, it, it took a little bit of time for me to do it, so uh, that's just me. <laughs> All right, you take care, and we'll talk to you next time.